As Claudia said, we have a very timely subject uh, in our first panel, migration and the media. Almost no matter where you're from, you've probably had experience lately with the way that migration and integration issues provide fuel for sensationalism. Opportunistic politicians exploit both new and old media in very clever ways to manipulate public opinion. But journalists are not innocent victims in this process. They are often all too complicit in stereotyping migra migrants, in denigrating integration, and in demonizing diversity. Migration has become a politically explosive topic, and that's whether you live in the United States, in France, in Sweden, in Switzerland, in Germany, or in many of the other countries that are represented here today. So how can we harness media to tell the other side of the story, to present migration and integration as a positive opportunity for vibrant cities, as a comparative advantage that enriches urban life culturally, politically, demographically, and economically? What does it take for media to become a tool of effective change? That's what we want to talk about in the next hour with a truly qualified panel of experts. They all have hands-on experience with the strategies and tools and tactics that are needed for responsible and sustainable media campaigns. And at the end of our session, in about 40 minutes, we're gonna be looking for questions from you. We would very much like to hear your questions, not so much statements as questions. So we are gonna be looking forward uh, to your contributions as well. And now I have the honor of introducing our very distinguished panel, and I'd ask, like to ask them to come to the stage as I introduce them, and they'll be taking their seats from this outer point inward. So our first uh, panelist, Bashi Kurashi, known to many of you, the editor of Media Watch, which is a quarterly magazine focused on media and minorities. He's also the chair of Fair Play, a Danish media monitoring organization. He's also the chair of the Advisory Council to, and was the former president of, ANAR, which is the largest EU network against racism. Next, I'd like to introduce Susan Margetti. She is managing director of the Canadian Broadcast Corporation, CBC Radio, TV, and online presence in Toronto. At CBC Radio 99.1, she implemented policies to ensure that it reflects the city's diversity, and she was well rewarded for that, uh, or her station was, so we're gonna hear about that from her. And next, I'd like to introduce Rokaya Diallo. She is the columnist and com the commentator for Canal Plus and the co-founder and president of Les Indivisibles, which is a French organization that uses humor and irony to fight racism and break through stereotypes. And last but not least, Frank Sherry is the founder and executive director of America's Voice based in Washington, an organization which he founded in 2008 in order to exert strategic influence on the way that issues of immigration reform are communicated. Susan, there's a common perception of journalism as dominated by negative and sensational comment, but I guess that Metro Morning didn't make it to number one more than, what'd you say, 24 times 24. on the basis of disaster reporting. Uh, how did you do it? Um, I, I think that uh, we have to take just a very small step back, which is uh, when I started at CBC in Toronto as the brand new manager, the city had changed, Toronto. You've heard a little bit about how diverse that city is. It's at the halfway mark in terms of diversity. And yet, when you turned on the radio in Toronto, you did not hear that. You didn't see that in the staffing. And so what we did was we took a step back, and it wasn't a matter of hiring a person or doing a story or doing a town hall, but holistically looking at how can we recreate this team to be more relevant, to create product programming content that is more relevant to more people. And when you have, you know, radio is still an ideas business. When you have a range of perspectives uh, and uh, a completely broad and different group of people at that story meeting table, what you get are a range of ideas. And you get ideas that are about building trust and building relationships. 
You get ideas that highlight the positive. You get ideas that don't shy away from the issues that need to be exposed because it, it's a whole lot more than why can't we all just be happy and live together. Um, there are very deep issues and concerns and I would say that tolerance uh, remains one of the big ones, not just in Toronto but in, in, in the world. Uh, and um, you know we don't shy away from those but it is about building trust building relationships and it's about creating the team that will bring those ideas and those perspectives right to the story meeting table and that was key and core I think to our success. Rukai Diallo, racism and discrimination are hardly a laughing matter yet we hear that Les Indivisibles relies on humor yes. to break through stereotypes. Uh, is this tool really of sufficient caliber to fight uh, such big enemies? It's a tool among others. So first of all, I have to, uh, uh, for, please forgive myself because I'm not a French English speaker, so I'll try to <coughs> do my best. And uh, humor is a way to fight racism, it's a way among others. So we think that um, we don't have to make people feel guilty when they have uh, stereo, when they produce stereotypes or prejudice. And we think that um, the best way to make people evolve in their conception of perception of the others is to make fun of them. So uh, Les Indivisibles uh, is, aims is to decon deconstruct ethno-racial prejudi prejudice and stereotypes through uh, humor and derision. For example, we have conceived uh, some animated series that we have produced by yourself and broadcast it on the internet. And we bring them uh, in front of uh, uh, pupils in the, in the high school, in the, in the, in the schools, to, to make them uh, be uh, um, uh, aware of uh, what prejudices that uh, are uh, present in their uh, daily, daily life. And uh, the, the, the other way to use irony can be very tough. For example, we have created uh, a ceremony which name is uh, Les Yabon Awards because uh, most part of our job at Les Indivisibles is the Media Watch. And uh, um, last year, for the first time, we, uh, we created a, an, an award ceremony, a humoristic, humoristic parody of the Academy Awards, that uh, with a banana skin in guise of a trophy, uh, honored those people who, uh, uh, and public personalities, such as politicians, journalists, and artists who authored the most racist sentences. So it's a way to make fun of people, to name and shame them, without with, 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 uh, without uh, having no, with, uh, without having any money, for example, it's free. You just have to to raise some people, uh, no, well-known comedians, to to um, to, uh, to be on stage to, to present the, the show, and then uh, you uh, name and shame the people that are that author the, the the best racist sentences. <laughs> I, I must say, when I read about it, I wondered whether you had found a way to be funny about the recent campaign against the Roma. Uh, it was not um, really. It was it, no, it was not easy. For, for example, some, sometimes we just produce some articles uh, and produce irony. And um, for example, uh, another another <coughs> thing that we we, we did. Uh, there was a mayor in uh, in a city in uh, in France uh, that complained about his, his city that uh, there was um, not enough uh, white people in his city because he was in front of the camera and it, it seems to him that it that there was not enough white people in in the, in the camera. So we organized a kind of uh, giant casting in front of the city hall <laughs> to recruit white people for the, for, the, for the mayor. So that's a way to make fun of you. <laughs> Bashi Kurashi, Media Watch documents the media's coverage of minority and uh, integration issues. How often do minorities achieve positive coverage in the media? Melinda, first of all, uh, I think um, is, I'm very thankful for, for Maitri that to bring a media issue in this conference when we're talking about migration and, uh, and integration because I have worked for almost 20, 30 years with the media and minorities and it is my belief from my heart and I'm a very serious person, I don't make fun of anybody and I don't want anybody to make fun of me whether through media or through myself. My uh, research and work with the media has given me this belief that without media's neutrality and without media's objectivity, there will never be any integration or success of integration process. That may be my personal opinion, but I think that people I work with, they are all complaining. And we are not talking about guest workers. We are not talking about foreign workers. We are not talking about ethnic minority. We are talking now about Muslims. So the whole issue in Europe today 
If you look at Get Wilder, if you look at all the media, the way they have projected him, it has become now a whole issue of Islam versus, versus Europe. So I think we have to be honest and straightforward and say, when we talk about media, when we talk about integration and migration, who we are talking about. So as long as the media remains the fourth state power, and they are not listening to the voice of normal people, both majority and minorities, or people like myself who do media mapping, it will be very, very difficult. So, and that was the reason why, actually, when I started approaching the journalists, they, the first thing they said, we are doing our own job. We can't write anything positive about you and don't come crying to us, you know, or come with some documentation. We said, fine. So we will come with you, to you with documentation. So we started collecting 10 newspapers on an everyday basis and two uh, TV news and made uh, this uh, media mapping and documentation and we come to the journalist and say, look, my friend, I'm not blaming you. I'm just showing you the mirror. Look in this mirror. If you look a beautiful picture, be happy. If you look ugly picture, paint yourself, whatever you want to do. it. But don't deny that ethnic minorities, especially Muslims, are today treated as Jewish people were treated in, uh, during the Nazi time. 